So these old telephones, the fairly analog, but not completely analog with the rotary on it, but the actual push buttony ones, so on, where there's just no caller ID, nothing else. It just basically is a phone that sends out beeps and then it rings when it gets a call and it just works. That you can pretty much get for free because who has a landline these days? And specifically who has a landline that looks like this, where it's completely corded? Is there anything useful in them to recover? I mean, so far you would expect the speaker and microphone to be the only exciting part from it, but is there any other recoverable stuff in here? You know, the bell, I mean, is there anything fun in a telephone that pretty much you could just get from someone for free as I did here? Useless cable, three, three wires, since it's just a mic speaker and then common. The handset here is actually sealed, so uh, to take it apart, I'm going to break it. Oh, well, there's a little tab here, so probably if I pop that off with a pen. Paper clips are a weird thing I recommend you still have around. Well, I just shot pieces of plastic everywhere, so that's great view on the nameplate there. And then that's where you find the actual screws to open it. Break some more plastic. A little bit of paper retention there, more broken plastic. Um, and then just... Guess it could just be to add weight to it so this handset doesn't weigh nothing. Not too exciting. Let's get some power and see how loud they are. We'll just blow it out. Yay. Um, and the microphone, however useful that could be. Plus the connector. Nice strain relief type thing in here. Alright, so that's not exciting. The actual phone. Got a high-low selector, I guess. The crap with these screws. I assume those are rivets for whatever tiny board will be in there. Wow, disconnect it from the wall before servicing. Who would have thought? That doesn't sound intelligent or anything. I'd rather just play with the actual landline power. Yeah, there. Exactly what I thought. This can pick up the handset receiver. It's actually a really cool way they did it. So there is. So when the handset puts down, it actually pushes one of these switches. Um, so that's kind of a cheating way to figure it out. Here's our actual landline connector. Nothing exciting. Two wires, so... Circuit board's not too exciting. I'm assuming that's a telecom rated chip there. A little bit of protection here and there. Here's our little ringer we'll play with in a second. Keypad is a little pre-made unit here. We'll take off and look at, uh, feels like the rubber dome like that. Didn't quite achieve what I was going for there, actually. Assuming it'll come off in a second. Um, connector glued on, so that's fine. Oh, the screws are on the back for this. We'll take this off in a second and look at the keypad. Maybe we'll edit in order. Uh, the keypad part's glued down and the bell's underneath. Wires go over the main board there. So... They actually glued down the connector here, so instead of spending the time desoldering it and then dealing with the glue, we'll take the obvious approach here and... Remove the keypad. We'll look at that in a second. I really feel like I'll be using the bell, so I'll leave as much wire as possible, but I don't care to desolder it right now. All right, here's the main board. So let's take a look at that, as we can expect it to be boring. They've got that large, chunky on-off switch that's on the back for, I think, the ringer. Solder these two leads together. One of these guys really that uh, 250 volts there. Since I don't do telecom stuff, I don't recognize that chip at all. 
Uh, but I'll look it up real quick. Well, that was an easy find. That chip is just a dialer. And the datasheet likes to tote how it's CMOS designed and yada yada blah. But uh, basically it just plugs right into the keypad, which makes sense. It's, phys it's physically next to the keypad, and so that kind of makes sense. But yeah, it's just designed to take keypad input and dial with it. Nothing else than that. The rest of the board is just everything basic you would expect. Bridge rectifier up at the top. Interesting coloring on some of the discrete transistors here. Kind of cool how it's silver, but uh, yeah, it's not a camera trick. It's actually got paint on it. All right, let's look at the keypad. And exactly as expected, it's more of the rubber dome style with just thousands of little buttons in there. And then your little selector switch. Nice solder mast board, and that's it. So, let's see if I can do this on an angle so I don't have to deal with this plastic crap. I sometimes purposely leave plastic things in the way just so these little angle screwdrivers I have have any purpose in their life. Because they're awesome and handy, but rarely do you have a strange angle where you can't get to screwdriver in at all. There, it wasn't that fun. Oh, now it's stuck. I've made bad decisions today. There, it wasn't that fun. We got a bell. I has phones. Another one of these older-ish landline phones. This one's a bit less fun and exciting. Button style there. Um, Fairly heavy handset, but as we know from earlier, with the giant bit, I bet there's just weight in here to make it feel nicer. And uh, overall, much cheaper. So this part I expect to come off relatively easy because, I mean, you're supposed to put your little phone numbers here. The users expect to be able to take this off. And there we go. Except this one just has one screw. Alright, so what's inside of this one? More broken plastic. Seems to be a theme with these phones. Looks like a fairly similar speaker unit, um, if not identical. The microphone pickup probably might be the same, but it just has a different casing. This one has the weight more integrated. So it's kind of like they uh, started figuring out exactly how much weight they wanted in these handsets. Um, so now there's bits of broken plastic everywhere. It's little release tabs, so you're supposed to slide it back and then it kind of hinges out. Oh well. Okay, so this base station, uh, let's kind of see what differences there are. With this thing, my only question is why? Wait, maybe? Okay. The little posts uh, for keeping it up, I think because of the keypad, so they just have some strain relief that way. Piezoelectric transducer. Handset. Plug for the wall. And then basically, well, I like a little bit different. There's actually another chip on there. Here's the incredibly dirty front where all the goobery grossiness gets through the keypad. Really big carbon traces on this one. Kind of interesting. But all right, so I see how I, I was perplexed by how it was shaped, but no, it's just a normal switch once you get it flipped over. And uh, yeah, so when you 
when you press the headset handset down, that goes down and presses this switch here. There's just two ICs on it. All of your default passives. That again, silver painted transistor two actually. And well, nothing else, no physical bell. So this is a type of phone that uh, if you're trying to recover crap, kind of can't get the keyboard out individually to be one complete unit because it's molded into the case and if you're bad like me you'll end up cracking the case the whole time because you're just being fast and lazy and they always glue these in and do all kinds of other mean things that uh, make it impossible to get out it's this little piece of metal um, made it easy to get to so why not probably lead or something be warned Ooh, you can tell the discoloration of plastic at least you can in real life Probably not with the lighting here. They really glued the mic in on this. All right, finally we're into the world of wireless. Now, uh, don't remember the reason for this unit being thrown away, but uh, nonetheless, it became mine through ways of things. So, it doesn't feel like anything. Nice retention clip on the speaker, front panel board just nicely screwed in. I actually like the construction of this because I can take it apart easily. Yeah, that nicely lifts off. And uh, there's your speaker. Oh. That comes off as an assembly. Well, typically when you want to take these lenses out, there's a little release tab, as there was somewhere now. Somewhere far away. Somewhere far away, but uh, typically there's a little release tab and you push it and the lens falls out. These people didn't think that was enough, so they had that foam... Oh, it's on here now. They had that foamy tape stuff Ooh, so that means it broke. I was going to make this whole comment on, oh, when you can recover filter stuff, you never know what might come in handy for. But uh, I've got two. Fun game with your magnetic parts tray. How high can I make the stack of screws or so on? Uh, it's kind of like those little magnet games you can get where it's a bunch of little people in the magnetic base and you stand them up. And there's two modes of play. You can either just grab them, stack them on, or you can throw them from a distance and see how tall you can get them. This, obviously, I put them on there. But uh, up to up to visible, there's actually not a screw underneath, but uh, there we go. Um, yeah. Was from just throwing them. All right, so with all the screws out, it's got this retention clip, and this base is gone. Okay, and now for the big reveal. So your front panel actually gives you nice little seven segment LEDs there, uh, even the decimals, which is cool, I guess. I don't know what they use it for. Probably has a little blinky thing below that tells you something. Um, someone actually labeled the silk screen for each button. That's probably great for debugging. Um, and uh, so yeah, not a bad little front panel thing there. Over on this side, so we have our main chip here that's just one of those little boards with silicon on it, or a little piece of silicon on it with uh, that black covering stuff. We actually have a version on it, 3.12. I didn't get it all the way off. Things weren't getting any more obvious, so, oh well. So we scoot the board around. We have a MXIC part there upside down next to a crystal. Move around some more. There's our obligatory DSP chip. And here's all of our input stuff with a uh, little surface mount bridge rectifier because obviously it's AC coming in for storage and smoothing there. So 
1000 mic at 16 volts. Fun to note, there's actually two bridge rectifiers on here. And hey look, we've got the US version. I don't know what else to say about this board. Starting to speed up the process now, I have uh, three of these handsets. And I've taken one apart already. Main board with the uh, buttons as expected. Four LEDs for the uh, overlay part. Um, your microphone, speaker, ringer, little uh, dot matrix LCD as far as I'm aware from the box. I don't uh, didn't power any of these on to check, but uh, should be dot matrix, so I might try to do a project I've been told to do. Uh, on the back, your DSP chip, that similar processor. This is actually version 2.06. Connector for battery, oscillator, inductor, and a little chip down here. Since there's three phones, one main base station, there's two floating ones. Inside just has a single diode for half-wave rectification and a cap. And that's it because they all use those 8-volt AC plugs. Incredibly nothing in here. At the moment, can't think of why I need three of these in perfect condition. So let's see if I can break one open real quick. After a bit of hardcore Dremel work, we're able to get one of these plugs open and as you'd expect for a power supply that gives an AC output it is just a transformer in it. Um, and then I was kinda looking at the, the wires going into the transformer on the primary side and I wanted to see if they have some good method of plugging into the wall or if mains is just going onto these little thin things immediately or what have you is that uh, the plastic is pretty super thick on here and I mean I guess that's what you should expect when you actually get a brand power supply instead of a cheap crappy one included from something from China. Oh that's a little better. So the tabs on our American plug here come in and then they kinda scoop up through the plastic and that's where they actually solder on the wire for the primary, the secondary comes out uh, the transform of the wires and then solders on to the actual wire that goes to the strain relief to your product. And they kind of tacked it down with this weird rubbery foamy stuff. Kind of feels like my uh, mat I have here. Guess that does. So after opening all of those, let's do our final conclusion here on is there a use to recovering throwaway phones? Well, if you get an ancient one, you'll have a speaker and a microphone with some weights and a bell. And the keypad, which would probably be one of the more useful parts if you can get a phone where it's on its own unit, because then you can uh, use it for your keypad needs. And that's basically all that you would really want. Sure, you could rip off the switch on the back, maybe the connectors if you really wanted to recycle. And then if you get slightly newer ones, you end up just having boards with basically nothing to it. Crappy built-in keypads that you can't do anything with. And nothing else hardware-wise besides the speaker and mic. And then incredibly new ones. What, you're going to pull a 7-segment LED out of it and that's about it? Because you can't do anything with any of these parts over here. Because at least what I might try later is to make a synth just jokingly out of the tone generator for the dialing. But in here, what? You just have parts purpose-built for doing DSP work. And then the handsets just have a speaker. Can't really use the numpad. The screen you can pull out, sure. Um, so maybe uh, if you can figure out the interface or find a day sheet on it, yeah, maybe you'd be able to recover that. And then you have your speaker and mic. Base stations are worthless. I mean, sure, if you need... Transformers, that's a good way to get it, but I mean, that you get Transformers in anything. So really, if you can get an ancient phone just for free, I mean, you know, I don't know if I'd even pay a dollar, so you can really make sure you get the bell out of it, because uh, that would be a slightly weirder thing to find as a bell, because they're all going to be these piezoelectric speakers. That's kind of my conclusion. If you're getting a bunch of phones for free, sure, you can rip a few parts out and throw the boards in the scrap board box, but I really can't say it's worth it otherwise. Nice thing about these base stations, everything comes out real easy. The board pops out, go through the strain relief here. A little bit of work and the spring comes around. 
like that and you're done.